Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Friedel with Bright Star Productions in Houston, Texas. And uh, I wanted to start this series to uh, just kind of document what I do as I begin to create a scene. Now, um, specifically this scene that we're creating today is, um, or over this series, is going to be strictly practice, uh, meaning that there is no client uh, event associated with it. Now, not, that's not to say that we don't take the time to create it uh, so that possibly we could sell this idea later on. But the primary goal is to allow myself the opportunity to practice uh, on um, different fixtures, to different programming styles, uh, to get better and better at my job. Uh, so the first things first, though, is that uh, I am not a programmer because I want to be a programmer. I am a programmer because it's necessary. And the things that I do in programming are based on what's going to be best for the design. So um, there are some things that I need to work on, and specifically that is uh, learning the effects engine at the M series um, more completely. And I think that with any effects engine, uh, the more you practice, the better you get and the quicker you become. So uh, to that end, we're going to be building uh, an LED grid uh, or some sort of light grid. It might not be LED, it might be some something else. But uh, I'm at this point, I think it'll be an LED grid using probably Nexus panels or something similar. Um, also, Brightstar has just acquired a whole bunch of new gear. For instance, we just bought 115 of uh, a fixture called the Illuminart Colorist Q12A. Now, that's a, it's an architectural fixture, but it does allow you to do pixel mapping on it. So you can do, uh, it's 12 cells, and you have uh, RGBA on each cell. So we'll be setting those up in 48 channel mode and working with those um, in the effects engine. Uh, another fixture that we recently acquired, and I do have some programming experience on, is the BMFL Spot as well as the Roby Psych FX4, uh, the Colorado One Solo, and uh, then of course we're going to make sure that we use our old standards like the Max 700 which is by far my favorite profile fixture, uh, and then uh, the Mac Aura which is my favorite wash fixture. And I incorporate the Aura in every show and the 700s are probably at this point in 70% of my shows. Um, generally, I do corporate theater more than any other type of event, but I don't like to limit myself to that style of design. I want to make sure that I'm always giving myself the opportunity to do different events. So um, I think that one of the things that I always enjoy is um, looking at different award show type setups. Uh, with the custom LED walls, the custom video walls, custom set pieces, um, and specifically uh, there's some fantastic programming going on, especially in, uh, I use the voice as an example, I really enjoy watching the programming in the, in the voice. Uh, last year, um, the, the performance with the weekend just blew me away. So I wanted to make sure that um, I look at that and use that as inspiration moving forward and see how we can take a corporate theater show and make it more than just a standard up and down with some, you know, gen effects generated effects. We want to do something that's that is um, dynamic and to the point and not just random. So uh, I work very hard on creating these looks with that in mind. And my clients appreciate it and they see it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in here. We're going to be using Martin Show Designer. Uh, we're using the Pro version 6. Uh, I have the newest, well actually they just came out with a new version today so I'll be upgrading that a little bit later. So. Um, 
as I stated, I really want to work on a an award show design, and that's going to require that I build some custom set pieces that will be built in Vectorworks and maybe some in SketchUp. And I won't be recording those. I'll be building those and then bringing them into the scene. Uh, additionally, um, there'll be another set of videos of me programming this scene uh, using the M-Series. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and start this this scene. And the, this is, uh, the, when we come back, we will create, um, we will begin adding objects and fixtures using not only the visualizer but also show designer uh, module and the modeler. So uh, I typically save my scenes in Dropbox because I don't just work on this workstation. I have uh, a couple others as well and I jump between them all depending on where I am, whether I'm here at home or at the office. Uh, so let's go back. I'm going to create, uh, let's go to my scenes. And, uh, you know, if I come in here, I mean, I've just got so many scenes in here. Uh, I'm just going to start a new folder. Uh, let's see. So, new folder. And we'll just call this Practice 2017. Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and date it as today so that um, that I can easily recall. Uh, so practice 2017, and then we'll repeat that. Practice 1, and then today's date, 14, 2017. And we'll save that. So I always start by saving my scene first. Um, it's just a habit. And another thing I want to make sure that you do, um, or a, a habit that I'm in that is a good idea, uh, is to go ahead and make yourself a logo with your name on there, uh, in addition to the show designer logo, so that uh, when you begin sharing these things, uh, you're always tagged. And if by some chance someone is uh, sees this and they say oh I really would like that and I would like to have that at my event well they know how to get in touch with you it's not just some photo online and they're just going to try to recreate it so tag your work um, um, I do it about 50 percent of the time you know if I'm posting up on the Facebook page I don't necessarily tag my information on there but um, so uh, when we come back, we'll begin entering in the different uh, objects uh, and this generic uh, stage objects. And we'll expand upon there um, after that. <laughs> 